Hello everyone and welcome back. So this time in AGR 150, we're going to be going over design and analysis. This is the beginning of chapter three. Okay, a little subheading right here is that process is your shield, okay? So remember this, engineers solve problems. However, you're going to have a bunch of different solutions to every problem. You need to have a process to determine which solution to try and test. Now, this is the process of design and analysis. My important point for you is never make a choice without a reason. Be able to defend your choices. Now, why is this? Well, the reason is because testing takes money. Testing is extremely expensive. And in case you're wondering, well, how expensive is it? Well, let's just say that you had one test you wanted to make, just one. Um, but you had to do it, sorry, that one test only cost $5. Okay, in this case, you're good, you're, you're fine, you know, $5, that's not bad. Let's say you had a million tests you had to take. FDA approval um, is, takes a long time. Um, FAA approval to get an airplane in the air takes a long time, it takes a lot of testing. And so if after all that testing, your design is a failure, it does not work you've wasted possibly millions of dollars. And so they're going to come back to the beginning and they're going to ask, did you make a choice without reason? Was there a reason you chose that design? Was there a reason you thought that modification was going to be a good idea? If the answer is no, I didn't actually think it was going to be a good idea, or I just kind of guessed, you're going to lose your job. Um, however, if you followed a process to determine that design, then you should be fine. You'll probably be okay. So just remember that when you are making a decision, you need to follow a process. So if that decision is wrong, the process will protect you. Okay, so what's the difference between design and analysis? Well, design is kind of the art. It's the art of creating ideas for different products or processes to solve a problem. It does not include construction or implementation. You're not worrying right now about how am I gonna build this? How am I gonna implement this? That comes a little bit later. Design is brainstorming, it's doodles, it's um, napkins and random scribbles and crayon drawings, whatever it takes to come up with this awesome new idea. For example, Elon Musk comes up with a bunch of crazy ideas. He says like, I wanna make some sort of lattice that connects to your brain. Um, is that a good idea? Well, he's going to find out. He's really putting a lot of money into it. Um, but that's the design aspect. You come up with this idea and you put it on paper and then you have to then analyze it. Um, so that's the creation aspect. And then you evaluate these ideas to see, are they feasible? Analysis is studying the options you have designed and making sure that you've taken everything possible into account to see which one is the best option right now, which one is going to solve that problem. Um, design is the art, analysis is the science. However, analysis will inform your design because maybe you find out that you know most of your designs failed or all of them failed. Well, why do they fail? Make some new designs taking that into account. Okay, for example, here's just a really simple thought experiment. Let's say you have a leak. There's a leak in your roof, okay? You look up, oh no, there's a leak in my roof and you see the, like, the water dripping, it's terrible. Um, well, design, there's various ways you can solve that problem. Option one, break out the ceiling, just completely blow it away. Well, there's no longer a reek in your roof because you no longer have a roof. Option two, allow it to continue getting worse and worse. Option three, paint over the spot. Option four, call a plumber. Lots of different options here. Okay, that was the design aspect. I was just coming up with the ideas. Then I analyzed those. Well, blowing off my roof is not a good way to take care of my home. It's going to destroy everything. Bad idea. Um, option two, just let it get worse and worse. I'm ignoring the problem that's not actually solving it. Bad idea. Um, paint over it. Well, it might look okay for a while, but eventually it's going to leak through that again, cause another water spot. Bad idea. Call a plumber. Maybe the best idea. So um, in the end, I would maybe decide to go with calling the plumber, or maybe I would try to brainstorm again. It can be iterative. You can go back and forth. So with this, I hope you've gotten a little bit of a taste of what the design analysis process is and next time we'll go more into what that design process actually looks like see you next time bye bye